This is shocking. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story today, Walmart is going to do the unthinkable, and this is going to quickly spread to other retailers, which is why you're not going to believe what Walmart is about to do and the reason behind it. But I wanna take a look at what's going around the global economy as we set up today's show. We'll talk about Walmart and then get into the US data. As you'll see, things for US retailers are going to get far worse, which is why Walmart and others will follow their lead. Now, let's go to Bloomberg where we picked today's story up with a headline, shipping costs soar as war and climate risks choke key waterways. And this is just one of those knock on effects that we expected, not only delays in shipping times, but a reduction in goods. Now we're seeing the cost to ship go up. This is going to absolutely get passed on to American consumers and others around the world. As this week, provisional chartering rates for Suzmax tankers to move oil from Iraq to the Mediterranean rose above 90 world scale points, said ship brokers. That's a sharp jump between the 75 to 85 points in provisional bookings made in the past week. These points represent a percentage of a fixed predetermined rate for a given route and tend to fluctuate according to demand versus supply. So we know that, of course, shipping prices have gone down as demand has gone down from consumers around the world, meaning less goods are traveling now because supply constraints we're seeing, of course, price go up. This inevitably will get passed on and back feed into, of course, consumer price indexes around the world, which is why, of course, we know the U.S. military is eager to respond to keep those waterways open, to keep global trade running smoothly. Although, one thing we can look at, as we're about to see, demand is going down in a big way, so maybe the impact of the economy may not be as great. As we look to Taiwan, as export orders now return to growth for the first time in the year, maybe perhaps giving us some indication that a global soft landing is emerging. But hang tight, we're nowhere near that yet. As orders to Taiwanese companies from overseas clients grew whopping 1% in November compared to the same month last year, this according from the economics ministry in Taipei, that was much lower than the 5.2% figure forecast by economists. So you see that while we're excited about any form of growth, that 1% is a big deal, experts actually believed it was going to be significantly higher, thus kind of putting an end to the notion that there's any soft landing occurring. And it's Despite the miss, the data bolster cautious hopes that a recovery is getting underway. And Taiwan's exports saw their highest increase in more than a year in November, though they fell short of market expectations. And here we can see export orders rebound, but are less confident. In fact, you can only see that the survey was up at 5.2%. The actual was at 1%, putting it right on target for the same growth rate, roughly we saw kind of around late 2019, before we happened to head into the pandemic, suggesting that again, as we make the case that any sort of rollover in the data here is actually going to lead to some very bad news for the global economy. Now, let's head over to China because things there are getting worse too. As China's mega banks cut deposit rates further to boost growth, and all this is going to translate to what we see going on in America, many people do not believe that the Fed is ever going to cut rates, that we're going to get back to the point where there is such a lack of demand, the central bankers will be eager to do anything. But yet we look to China, who is one of the leaders right now in the global economic slowdown, and you can see they're just about doing anything they can, and it's not working just as we predicted. China's escalating push to have its banking behemoths backstock struggling property firms is adding to a maelstrom of woes for the $57 trillion sector. Banks' net interest margins slumped to a record low of 1.73% as of September. That's below the 1.8 threshold regarded as necessary to maintain reasonable profitability. Bad loans, meantime, have hit a new high. Now, this is exactly what we've talked about during times of actual stress in a system. So when you look at 
currency shortages, whether there's a global dollar shortage or in this case a yuan shortage in China, when you start to get bad loans showing up, it's because people are entering delinquency. They're unable to pay on these loans. Perhaps the loans are also upside down because valuations are dropping. And this is not a good sign for the banks. The risk here is what's happening in China spreads to the rest of the world, which we know is very likely. And of course, the U.S. banking system, as we already know, is largely insolvent due to the fact that the small and mid-sized regional banks keep drawing even more money from the Fed every week. And a revenue growth streak since 2017 for some of the nation's largest state banks may snap this year. And as we look, Chinese households increased the share of their income that they saved during the pandemic and shifted their financial assets toward bank deposits. So as Beijing looks to spur internal demand, we made the case that Chinese consumers are not dumb, that they're looking around the world. Remember, they're going to the factories and the other businesses that support the factories, and they're seeing a lack of demand. And now that lack of demand, as you'll see later in today's show, is hitting U.S. shores. And they're starting to realize that, wait a minute, if the global economy doesn't pick up, that doesn't bode well for our jobs. And when people are worried about their incomes and their livelihood, they save money, they don't spend it. And that, of course, causes an economy to continue its downward spiral, which is exactly what's happening in China. And that's hitting the performance of funds that buy stocks and bonds on the behalf of households to look to save even more money. And more evidence of the global dollar shortage was well in October, a second biggest month of foreign selling of U.S. stocks ever. And so this is interesting because here we're seeing the U.S. equity markets hitting all-time highs. We note that back in October they were rallying and as foreign investors were selling. So what you're seeing here is not only as we talk about on the Sunday show, machines buying up from their short positions, but a takeover of retail investors who are just eager to buy at the top. And I know many of you in the comments say, wait, that doesn't make any sense. But yet what we see over and over is most people buy at the tops and sell at the bottoms. Here, foreigners were getting out. It's just exactly what we suggested is indeed, this is a retail driven rally. But looking further, officials dump treasuries as gold reserves soar. Now this is very interesting because what have we actually seen in the treasury market is that yields are going down and bond prices are going up at a time when they're selling in the rest of the world. And for the second month in a row, total foreign net long-term portfolio securities inflows to the U.S. were tiny, just $3.3 billion. Meanwhile, Belgium and Luxembourg were the biggest sellers of U.S. Treasuries, and China was also a net seller, combining China and Belgium's data since Beijing is using Euroclear as a custodian for many of its Treasury holdings. We see that China sold over $40 billion in Treasuries in October, its second biggest selling month since November of 2016. Now, you would think that this would cause interest rates to go skyrocketing higher and bond prices to crumble, but what this is is evidence, just as we suggested, of a global dollar shortage. And when there is an insufficient amount of dollars, yes, countries like China sell their treasury holdings, their savings of dollars to get dollars. That's what they're doing. But what we look at is interest rates are a function of growth and inflation expectations. So when you see China as a net seller, well, it tells you that growth is headed down along with inflation. And yet that baffles many investors because they thought rates would go higher. And we showed you how easy it is to make money on declining rates. Let's do an update here with our CTA Timer Pro. We're going back to November 2nd. And by the way, we're going to have a big announcement coming, hopefully sometime in January. We're going to make these reports even easier, so easy that anybody, even if you've never traded, you'll be able to use them to make money. But let us show. Let me show you here. We noted to our subscribers, the TLT, the long bond, was coming off its deep short position. And because we run a historical overlay on the machine position, we tell people this is a massive buying indicator. Now you can pair this with our Momentum Timer Pro. This looks at tactical indicators and moving averages and smooths them all out. And here we see on November 2nd, we had one daily count on the buy signal coming out of also a deep sell position across a one, three and six month period. And all that together, you would have bought it open right here 
on November 2nd. And had you done that, you'd be a whop, up a whopping 14.5% at a time when foreign investors are selling, which would give you the impression bond prices are falling, but indeed they're rallying for all the right reasons, and it's just that easy to make money. And you could be one of those. And right now, where there's three coupon codes for today, again, for a free month for CTA and Momentum Time Pro, I want you to sign up, I want you to make money, and I want you to be a long-term subscriber, because as many say, Steve, one trade pays for years of your service. And now let's take a look at what's going on at Walmart as we start to look at problems in the U.S. economy. I wanted you to see there's slowdowns around the world, and this is now coming to America, but in a very, very bad way that's going to spread to retailers all over the country. As U.S. buy now, pay later splurges, raise holiday debt hangover risk, and with U.S. credit card balances at record levels and defaults rising, now this is something that we've made the case that at some point we're going to see people get to that peak limit on their credit card where they can't go any further. Banks, we know, are tightening standards. We've been looking at this on the show on a regular basis, and they're not going to extend those credit limits, but consumers want to keep spending. They believe in the soft landing. So now they're turning to buy now, pay later. More shoppers are tapping the buy now, pay later services on key shopping days to stretch their budgets, despite the fact that their defaults are rising. What is shocking is cash strap shoppers who are adding month long loans with rates can top out at a whopping 36%. The maximum lenders can charge in many states. So people are doing these on installment plans, which is absolutely wild. You can see that this is a train wreck waiting to happen, which is shocking when you see what Walmart's about to do. Here we see consumer loans, this in blue, shown on a year over year rate of change of credit cards and other revolving plans against total compensation, which is average hourly earnings multiplied by average weekly hours of production and non supervisory employees and one thing we note is that when total compensation growth is declining people turn to their credit cards to maintain their standard of living here we see the credit card debt isn't growing quite as fast as it did during the global financial crisis of course we're not in an all-out panic yet but notice compensation growth is heading down and so rather than actually cut spending consumers are turning to buy now pay later and it's about to get even easier when you go to Walmart as self-checkout kiosks at 4,500 Walmarts now offer buy now, pay later loans for basic items. That's right. You can go and buy just basic stuff, press a button, and you've got an installment loan. A firm holdings announced Tuesday that its buy now, pay later service has been expanded to self-checkout kiosks at 4,500 Walmart stores nationwide. Customers can purchase electronics, apparel, toys, and many more items except groceries by spreading payments out from 3 to 24 months. Could you imagine that? A recent Affirm research reveals that more than half of Americans are looking for retailers to buy now, pay later option at checkout. Moreover, we found that 76% of consumers would either delay or not make a purchase without Affirm. This is staggering because it tells you that the health of the U.S. consumer and their finances is in dire shape. And they're spending now by doing these buy now, pay laters, pulling demand forward from next year in the hopes there's a soft landing. So when there isn't a soft landing, then what means is they're Stuck on this debt and of course they have to make those payments and that means less demand going into next year of course that will lead to more layoffs and again next thing you know the u.s will be following china down Expand our partnership with Walmart and bringing a firm's transparent monthly pay over time options to their self checkout kiosks in the U.S. will help even more consumers increase their purchasing power during the holiday shopping season and even beyond. I don't know what you think about that, but to me, this seems absolutely dangerous to give people a push button option to pay over time. I just cannot imagine that this is going to end well for U.S. consumers at all. It just goes to show is that they will max out absolutely everything and drag the economy forward until it all comes crumbling down and wait till we find out when a firm starts seeing all kinds of delinquencies and defaults, well, then we'll know it's really bad.
A report published earlier this month by Bank of International for International Settlements said that buy now, pay later is mainly being used by young adults. That's clearly not good, particularly those with low education and maxed out credit cards. While their major retailers might follow Walmart's lead, well, they will. Don't worry. When their sales drop and Walmart's go up, they'll follow. It's never a good sign when retailers expand the purchasing power of broke consumers. No, it is not a good sign. A firm thinks this is a great deal for them, and maybe in the short term it will be but during the next recession you're going to watch them outright hemorrhage because what we're seeing around the, not only the world but as we now dig into the u.s data we are going to see demand is continuing to fall which is why companies like walmart are doing this and other retailers they're just going to have no choice but to follow until americans are so loaded up with debt and their incomes are going down that the whole system comes crumbling apart as U.S. inflation reports to show Fed's battle is now all but complete, suggesting that perhaps the Fed might be cutting rates soon. And the core personal consumption expenditure is likely to hit the 2% target on a six-month annualized basis. And setting that up means we're on our way, just as we predicted, that the Fed would get to their target. The problem is it's going to overshoot it to the downside in a big way. The surprising development led some Fed officials to make hasty revisions their projections said to publish on the afternoon of the 13th. That was during the FOMC meeting, but it also increased confidence among forecasters the next six months will look similarly subdued. And together they showed softening in key categories like goods, excluding foods and fuel, financial services, and certain healthcare components, leading forecasters to revise down their estimates for the PCE price measure. So you think about demand for goods going down. Why do you think Walmart's doing this? Because if they know demand's going down, but consumers wanna buy now and pay later and add to their debt load, well, of course, Walmart's gonna be all over that because if they don't do it, and this is why other retailers will follow, they're going to see their revenue go down, their earnings go down, profits go down, and of course, their stock goes down. And we know that no executive wants that to happen. A very simple example is apparel prices in November. The Consumer Price Index fell by the most in any November since 1942, suggesting the demand for apparel is falling. We saw that in other categories like household furnishing, furnishing prices, and electronics, you name it, and core goods have been much weaker than expected in the last month or two. Of course, we can look back what happened in the last month or two is outright simple to get. We saw the student loan repayments resume. We're seeing the end of the pandemic stimulus being drained from the U.S. economy and minimum payment on credit cards keep going up because not only are banks raising them because the Fed raised rates and we know with the lag that eventually hits it. And so what we see is consumers are tapped out of their discretionary spending. More people are on unemployment than have been on it in two years, leading to less demand. And what this all means is overall for retailers, things are going to get a whole lot worse. That's why Walmart is a leader here. But how for how long? Don't worry. Soon everywhere you go, maybe even to buy a sandwich, people will ask, do you want a loan? As we look to the Philly Fed Manufacturing Business Outlook Survey, and this looks bleak, as activity in the region continued to decline overall, according to firms responding to the December outlook. The survey's indicators for general activity and shipments remain negative. Furthermore, the index for new orders declined sharply and turned negative. Not a good sign. You think about what new orders will show you what that's a leading indicator of. An employment index dipped into negative territory. Not good for those doing some buy now, pay later, as they may lose their job. Job. And that continues to suggest mostly steady levels of employment. Meanwhile, price indexes near their long run averages. And of course, hope remains all there as future activity indicators rose. Now let's look detail out the report. New order diffusion index 20, down 25.6. This is staggering decline from last month's increase at 1.3. We see shipments still in the negative. Unfilled orders continuing to go down. Now remember, when unfilled orders, this is your backlog. As that goes down, and you don't have any new orders, well, guess what you don't need? Well, as many employees. Let's continue looking at delivery times. These are dropping rapidly. Inventories are falling. Prices paid are up, but get this, prices received. So prices paid, 25.1% of firms noted an increase. Only 136 of them said they got more. The prices received. How a number of employees down slightly, but how about this? Average employee work week. We talk about total compensation continuing to go down. This is a buy now, pay later disaster that is coming for the U.S. economy on top of the commercial real estate issue and on top of everything else. Now let's look at why retailers will be running 
to chase down companies like Affirm faster than you can imagine. Here we see the current new orders diffusion index for the Philly Fed in blue against the consumer price index in red, shown on a year-over-year rate change. And what we note is where new orders go. Well, the consumer price index in red, you can see it follows with a lag. And so new orders taking another leg down, suggesting that as we can validate, despite what's going on, of course, in the shipping industry, what this broadly says is demand from U.S. consumers is going down, inflation's going down, and that means for retailers, well, sales are going down as well. Here we can see new orders in blue heading down and now against advanced retail sales with the green line that is the baseline for retail sales you see there's a decrease in retail sales you see the same thing happen during the global financial crisis and look now retailers are going to see this thing turn upside down of course we noted you know small businesses are you know about 41 percent of them can't even pay their rent what this suggests is that's going to actually get worse because demand for retail sales is going to continue to fall and what have we noted in the past where retail sales go well employment soon follows and that means more Americans on the unemployment line with massive credit card bills and big buy now pay later deals you can only see the next crisis is coming much sooner than the political elites believe and with that I'm Steve Van Meter thanks for watching thanks for being fans bye now